So this is part two of the longest ramble. Now, uh, if you need more info, you could check. Uh, that's a topic on the Tyranid Hive. It just shows the ETC lists for uh, for Tyranids mainly, and it, it just there was a little topic on it. But anyway, um, I'm going to talk about Team England, Team Poland's list, and my list actually. The other two lists are uh, the rules are no special characters for the ETC, and also, which which affects Tyranids a little bit, but no one's going to be using Stormlord in 1750, which was the other point that they're. Uh, so both of those lists are 1750. Besides that. I have an 1850 list since the US seems to have switched to 1850 in the past year or two. So I'll talk about that after I go over their lists. All right. So what we got here is I'll start with Team England. So he's got uh the he's got the Death Star, the Tyrant Bone Sword Lash Whip, whatever. He's got the Death Star and the 3 Tyrant Guard with Bone Swords and Renin Claws. So serious power, 500 point block of HQ. And a Warrior Prime who attaches to it has regen, so he'll sit there and he'll add more durability and three wounds onto the squad. Now, for elites, 9 Hive Guard. For troops, minimum unit Termagon squads, so you can have Termagons in troops. There you go. And then you're looking at that and you're like, okay, Catalyst, Catalyst, Catalyst. Whoa, so he's going to feel up no, feel no pain for uh, the, the Hive Guard and the Tyrant. That's, that's pretty nasty. All right. Uh, yeah, as, as you noticed, his list is it's very copy-paste looking, kind of like Razor Wolves. Everything's just the same thing almost over and over again. The thing is, though, it's it's a pretty good list. Um, you'll sit there and he'll play against someone, and yeah, they'll pour fire. The, the thing is, his big HQ death squad thing, it'll take it'll take so much fire. Yeah, they probably will kill it. Will it hit vehicles? Probably not. However, his uh, nine hive guards sit there unmolested, and he'll sit there and just shoot, 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 and just have a field day, and he'll be spawning gaunts everywhere, and it'll be lovely. Because Turvagons, the three of them, is pretty hard to to, to kill. You play that on kill points, however, that's another story. Those Termagants, all of a sudden, his list comes quite a bit weaker. Besides that, on uh, yeah, on objectives and stuff, very strong list, and just in general, a great list. I'm not a huge fan of the Death Star. I can see it doing very well here. I'm not exactly sure how he did. I know a few guys on the uh, the Team England, but uh, I don't know the Tyranid guy. It's a good list. I, I'm pretty sure he did rather well with it, but. The main thing is, again, as in the last video, Nine Hive Guard, Spam Turbogons, hmm. Oh, what else is popular? The the Death Star Tyrant thing. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Team Poland, on the other hand. Team Poland, it's a gamble list. Uh, he happened to, uh, he actually beat Darkwind from the, uh, the US team, or Nick Rose. Um, he managed to beat him in a game, which he was playing the, the Leaf Blower Mech Guard list. Uh, it wasn't. It was. It was some really bad leadership rolls and stuff at, at the end of the game that mainly lost the game for Nick. But uh, he uh, he threw down. This list uh, definitely gave him uh, a run for his money. It uh, it shook him up a little bit. Uh, Turvagon, Catalyst, Cluster Spines, one in HQ, one in troops. He's got a minimum unit of ten Turvagons. Four squads of, I mean, three squads of twenty Gene Stealers. One of them has Toxin Sacks and uh, nine Hive Guard, of course. Now look at this list. Nine Hive Guard. Sixty Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers with Feel No Pain. Damn. Uh that was that was pretty much it. The the idea was spam Gene Stealers, run up to you. Oh look, Hive Guard, Hive Guard, Gene Stealers, Gene Stealers, and uh run up and rend things. It did rather well, surprisingly. Uh if he played against a land raider, he can uh he could stun it. And uh, that that's about it. Or have a Turbogon uh attack it in melee with uh two D six pen at strength five. That would be wonderful. Uh, yeah. List overall, I probably wouldn't bring that to a tournament. It's a little extreme. However, it's, uh, it's still really freaking nasty. Uh, but then again, his list can actually tango with Horde Orcs and stuff. So, I, I went over those two lists pretty quick. Um, they're good lists. Uh, Team Poland one's a little extreme, but it's still a good list. And, in general, if you look at that topic, most of the lists are, you'll notice, like, oh, okay, but hey, look, uh, this team has uh, only six Hive Guard and then two zones. There's only a few lists that don't max out and spam Hive Guard. The, the Team USA guy, Sean Kemp, he only had six Hive Guard. However, he had two Trigons and a Moloch to back that up, so it was kind of like, oh, okay, all right, he's got, he got some other things. I don't know why the Moloch, but it, it seems legit otherwise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so going on to my list, uh, let me open it up here. 
Uh, this is for 1850. You can see all this also in the more info. It's right under the topic post. Um, okay, so right here, uh, Turvagon, all kinds of fun upgrades, Warrior Prime, uh, in Troop, another thing, Turvagon, Big Squad of Gaunts, uh, 20 Gene Stealers, no upgrades, Elites, 9 Hive Guard, Heavy Support, 2 Tyranno Fixes with Rupture Cannon. Now, the idea of this list, most people are like, uh, oh, Tyranno Fixes are horrible. Yeah, Tyranno Fixes are shit, I'm not even gonna lie. However, uh, compare them to a Trigon, here we go. Okay, so for Two Tyran effects with Rupture Cannon, I can have three Trigons with Adrenal Glands if I... Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Now, you're, you're looking, why wouldn't you want three Trigons? I've played the three Trigons. About two Trigons making it into combat, and you're looking at... Uh, okay, so one to two make it there, across the field of withering, horrible fire that's all AP2, AP3. Okay, cool. And then you're hitting vehicles, and then they have all these plasma guys and just special weapons, and... The Trigons are less durable than Tyrannifexes. There are two reasons I take Tyrannifexes. One, a 2-up armor save makes you missile immune, as I call it. And two, it has really long range. So Tyrannifex will literally sit on the edge of the fucking board and snipe at you. Oh, cool, you have Jaws? I'm gonna sit in the corner of the board. You move your little rhino with the uh, Jaws Priest halfway up the board near all the Tyrannids. Oh, wonderful, I'm okay with that. Uh, this thing can sit back, kind of like a defiler, and just sit there and snipe stuff. Yeah, he hits on fours. Yeah, he shoots two dice. Yeah, he sucks otherwise and has this shitty flamer template. The thing is, this guy can sit there and snipe vehicles and actually kill them if you manage to roll moderately average. That's huge. That gives you... Okay, so you got the nine hive guard and you got two Tyrann effects. Wait a second. That's some serious anti-vehicle power. That's pretty nice. Now you're like, oh, but how you do with me deal with melee? Well, you do have the 20 gene stealers. You could outflank them if you want. They're more of they give you some flexibility and they give you some actual combat power, which is, uh, which is actually kind of helpful. Uh, yeah, they have no upgrades. I didn't have the points, but it's just I'm a huge fan of just having counter charge units or just units to have near your your big shooty guys. Like, oh yeah, they're running at you with uh. Okay, they decided to rush you, dropped a bunch of blood claws or something out of Grey Hunters, and now they're trying to uh, get into combat with Hive Guard, or they're just trying to tie you up, say, uh, so you're fighting some Guardian jet bikes. Oh, look, tie up Hive Guard. Very it's lovely to have, like, really nasty combat units. And yeah, the Gene Steels will sit there in terrain, and they'll, uh, they'll horror cover saves completely in the Turvagons if they can actually use their powers due to hoods. We'll catalyst them up, and they'll sit there with, like, four up cover, four up, you know, pain, and, uh, be, be very, uh, very happy that uh, they're sitting in cover. And if need be, I'll flank them, scare an IG player so he deploys in the middle. It, it'll it work out. Um, They just give me a little flexibility. Now, the 21 Gaunts, most people are like, well, I would take a big squad of Gaunts. Uh, yeah, Turvagons are real cool. You know what Jaws does to Turvagons? Or you know what, I don't know, a player dedicated on shooting them to death due to Turvagons. They die horribly. Now, the point of... Yeah, you do have two Turvagons that can throw out Gaunts. I like to have one big scoring unit. Now, I've run this in a few events. Big squad of 20 Gaunts. And then you put the Warrior Prime on them. Warrior Prime is Lash Rip. That's nice. Bones Rip. That's nice. The big thing, though, is you get the Warrior Prime, that huge unit of Gaunts. Ah, that's good. That's wonderful. You sit there and cover. Or half the unit and cover. Cool, so you have a 4-up save now. Hey, Trevor Gaunt, maybe get a feeling of pain on that. Whoa, all of a sudden, you're, you're pretty durable. I'll sit there and go to ground, or just arc in a huge line in front of my army, or behind my army, and just arc it around things. And you'll sit there, and all of this big line of, uh, th a unit like that held three objectives for me one game. Yeah, one Turvagon died immediately early on, other Turvagon jammed, spawned like a squad of seven or something. Yeah, you can expect Turvagons to score. D if your opponent really wants to kill them, they'll kill them. Uh, I just like having the big unit of Gaunts, because it's very hard to dislodge. You gotta prime with that. And also, look at this list. I have three Synapse units. If you don't count the Prime, that's two monstrous creatures that most likely aren't getting cover. And most likely getting shot. The, the, the US tournament scene? Yeah, cover's like a joke. You have uh, little hills and little forests and like, oh look, a hedge. Lovely, guys. Or a little crater. You don't have big line of sight blocking buildings. That, that's that's kind of a problem for Tyranids. However, for Guard and Tal, oh yeah, sit there, just shoot you all day. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the Warrior Prime sitting there in cover with the huge unit of Gaunts. Turvagons, 
Toxin sacks in your adrenal glands is wonderful. All of a sudden, the spawn gaunts become steroided because they're furious charging with toxin sacks. All of a sudden, that's, that's very nasty. Uh, also, oh look, Catalyst it gives feel no pain, and, and of course you take the cluster spine, so all of a sudden you can, I don't know, drop a template on a... Uh, something you need to kill like nurgling swarm scarabs it's just it just comes in handy you don't use it that often but when you do it, it it's just like oh that was good i had a few wounds on them that's good uh otherwise you see an elite nine hive guard you just need the nine hive guard um you could i could do two zones in a pod and six hive guard but then those two zones come down and uh, one one doesn't pass leadership. One manages to make it. Oh look, the librarian and that land raider. I gotta shoot the land raider. Then I have to roll a three up to hit. And then I have to roll a three up to pen. And then I have to not roll a one, two, or three. And I have to roll something marginal. And then that whole squad is probably going to get slammed by thunderhammer terminators or something horrible. Or I can have three five guards sit in the back and snipe the rhinos or whatever else or chimeras or vendettas. Uh, the zones of the pot are pretty much a suicide bomb. Oh yeah, you can have like seven Yumgarls. Wonderful, seven Yumgarls. They pop out, they stun shit. Ooh, ooh, uh, eh. I, I've got a very durable. Yeah, they have a four up armor. You sit them in cover, you sit them 24 inches away. Eh, that's pretty durable in my opinion. Compared to, uh, I don't know, toughness four things that run around and with the massive heavy flamers in most players' armies. Yeah. That pretty much wraps up what I was talking about in this video. So this is, yes, it's under 15 minutes. Eh, whatever. Um, the next video is going to be on what types of armies you see at tournaments and how Tyranids fare against them exactly. And I'll, I'll share my own and ramble on about my own experiences. Uh, that, that, that sums it up. So, uh, yeah, okay, that was part two. Go on to part three.